Let's say that you're running a mesh in Blender and you have a bevel on this object, right? So let's apply scale here and we're going to bevel this, all right? Then we're gonna run a kind of smooth, large bevel on top of this, so bevel, and let's run with nine segments, okay? And apply weighted normals. Now, let's say I wanted to apply a Boolean here, so I'm gonna, you know, activate box cutter and I'm gonna run a boolean and I wanted this boolean to be shallower and also have a smaller bevel running on it. In order to do that normally I would need to apply this first you know this bevel here on this mesh and then run a cut and apply a bevel on top of it to run a smaller bevel on the details. And the reason why the shading breaks is because you know the bevel is collapsing on itself. So if I'm going to go to bevel and press Z for wireframe, you see what's happening. The bevel, when it's, you know, too large, it's going to collapse on itself, right? Which is why you're getting this nasty shading problem. So either you would need to go deeper, which in this case, there's not enough space here to even cut this mesh with this bevel. Uh, but, um, you know, another way of doing this would be to simply apply a smaller bevel on this edge. And it's a very easy way of doing this with hard ups. So let me show you, right? So I'm gonna recover this card, I'm gonna nuke it. And I'm going to give you a cool tip here on uh, hard ups that you can remove dead modifiers very easily from your model. So this boolean is dead. It doesn't do anything because we nuked the cutter, right? So go to Q settings and control shift click on manage. And this is going to nuke all dead modifiers. And by the way, if you would like to learn more about hard ups and box cutter and you would like to master these add-ons, we have a fantastic course that will teach you all the tools, all the menus, the entire workflow for these two add-ons. And also there's an advanced section which will teach you all the advanced settings and tools. And since the documentation for these add-ons is outdated and uh, not really many good videos on these add-ons, this is the best way to learn how to use them effectively. And they're gonna save you a ton of time. We estimate that these add-ons save us about 800% time. So you're gonna be modeling eight times faster, which is insane. And they not really that complicated it's quite easy if you know what you're doing and you know i've been doing this for six years and i put all my knowledge practical knowledge into the course so i'll guide you through all the main tools the ones i'm using i'll show you my workflow and then we're gonna be actually putting all this knowledge into practice then you got advanced section bonus sections it's a really good course anyway if you're interested the link is in the video description click the link grab the course and enjoy now going back to our video, so the solution here would be to use a tool from Hardops, which is going to make this, uh, you know, this whole thing very easy. And this tool is called Step. So we're going to go to Operations and Step, and this is going to create a bevel, secondary bevel on the mesh, which you can't see at the moment yet, with uh, which is going to be half the size and also set to a different angle limit. Okay. So now watch. If I'm going to cut this mesh with a you know, with a boolean, you see the bevel is already much smaller. It's still too big, but it's not a problem because we can adjust it. So we can go to bevel and we can now adjust this bevel to something more reasonable and, you know, also scroll the number of segments to maybe three. Then we're going to move this cutter a bit. Let me just enable wireframe. Yeah, so let's go here, wireframe. And I'm going to grab this boolean and I'm going to move it in between these so the you know the bottom face is in between these two segments so it doesn't cause any shading problems yeah and then obviously we need to you know increase the size of the face here so it cuts through the mesh and there you go there's your you know secondary bevel and you know we could adjust it obviously make it larger smaller and uh, whatever you want and on top of it we can stack another one so uh, let me just move it slightly higher so GZ and move it slightly higher. So now you see we don't have any shading problem. We're just in between these two edges, which is perfect, right? And then I'm going to cut this mesh one more time. But before I do that, I'm going to run another step. It's going to add the third bevel. Then when I'm going to run a cut, this one's going to be tiny. And let's run a mirror, right? So now you see the advantage of this tool is that you can run live bevels, three of them, and you can adjust these bevels through the Q menu. So Q and bevel, you can adjust, you know, this one here, then press Q again, and you can adjust the big one, and then Q again, and you can adjust this one. So you have control over all these bevels, obviously there are limitations to how far you can push them, 
But the good news is that, you know, it's not destructive, right? It's still all procedural. So you can, you know, remove stuff, move stuff, adjust stuff, whatever you do, you know, you want to do. Now, there is a caveat here, and that's again a limitation of polygon modeling. But if you're going to run a smart apply on this, right? So smart apply, you're going to apply all the bevels except for the last one. So the, you know, the tiny one here, this one, right? And the reason for that is because, you know, we have to apply the booleans and in order to apply the booleans, we have to apply the bevels because when smart apply applies modifiers, it applies them from the top, okay, in order. And if you're not going to be applying these modifiers in order, you want to do it manually, it will not work because if I'm going to apply this boolean out of, you know, out of context, it's going to create, you know, a disaster, right? So that's the caveat. But it's going to allow you to work, you know, non-destructively. And you can always, you know, shift D and then you can copy, copy this mesh here. You can uniquify it, which will copy all these cutters and parent them to the new mesh. So we can go here to operations, right? And uniquify. And then we can move this mesh to a new collection backup, okay? So now I have the secondary mesh in a new collection, right? So I can go here to local view. Let me just hide this. So I think my mouse is not set for uh, for Blender. But anyway, that's this backup mesh. And you can see that now I can scroll through all the modifiers, right? And if I'm going to enable this mesh, I got all the modifiers as well. So that's what Uniquify will do. It will copy all the cutters, parent them to the mesh, and you're going to have a backup. So if you want to now apply all this, right, and, you know, run Smart Apply, you still have a backup. So you can go back, you know, kind of fall back on it. And there you go. That's my tip for stacking multiple bevels. I use it quite a lot. And, you know, it's it's really useful for creating smaller detail on larger bevels that normally in Blender is a bit of a hassle to set up. Here it's one click. So this is just a good example of how useful hard ops and box cutter can be. And again, if you want to master these two add-ons, we have this fantastic course, the ultimate guide to hard ops and box cutter. You can read more about this course and watch a video on it on our website. So click the link in the video description, grab the course and enjoy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.